Hi, I'm the Tax Geek, and here are more of your taxes, oversimplified. In this video, we're going to take a look at interest, how it's taxed, and how it's reported on your tax return. You receive interest when someone uses your money over a period of time. You primarily receive interest when you have an interest-bearing account at a bank, own bonds issued by a corporation or government entity, or you lend money to someone. If you have an interest-bearing account at a mutual savings bank, the interest you receive on the account is sometimes referred to as dividends. Whatever the bank calls it, what they're paying you is interest, and is treated that way on your tax return. You may also receive taxable interest from a life insurance company or even from the government itself if it pays your tax refund late. Interest becomes taxable to you when the bank or other financial institution credits it to your account and you have unrestricted use of it. Interest on United States savings bonds usually becomes taxable when you cash in the bond. Interest is reported on Form 1099-INT. Just like W-2s, this form comes in a variety of formats, and as long as the payer reports the legally required information to you within the required time frame, it is not necessary to use the exact form. We're going to use this Form 1099-INT to talk about interest, its effect on your taxes, and where the various amounts are reported on the tax return. We're not going to look at all the boxes on the form, just those that are most commonly used. As usual with these forms, the payer and recipient information is on the left-hand side of the form, including the payer's and the recipient's tax identification numbers. For either party, this could be a social security number or employer identification number. Box 1 contains the taxable interest income. This is reported directly on line 2B of your Form 1040 if the total income from all your accounts is less than $1,500 for the year. If you have more than $1,500 in interest income for the year, you must file Schedule B, listing the payers and amounts of interest paid. The total from this form is then transferred to line 2B of Form 1040. Box 2 on the form has any early withdrawal penalties you may have been assessed by your financial institution if you withdrew money from a time deposit, such as a CD, before it matured. These penalties may be deducted from your gross income as an adjustment to income and are reported on line 18 of part 2 of schedule 1 and then carried to line 10 of form 1040. Box 3 lists any interest from U.S. savings bonds and treasury obligations. This is interest paid by the federal government on its debts. This amount is not included in the amount of Box 1 and therefore must be added to any amount already included on line 2B of the 1040. It's important to know this amount because interest on federal obligations is not subject to state income tax. And now we'll skip down to Box 8, which lists tax-exempt interest. Any interest paid by a state or local government on its obligations is not subject to federal income tax. Though it's non-taxable, you must still report it on line 2A of your Form 1040 because the IRS still takes tax-exempt interest into account when determining whether or not part of any Social Security benefits you receive are taxable. When you earn tax-exempt interest, along with your 1099-INT form, you will also receive a statement telling you what state or local government paid the interest. Interest that is tax-exempt for federal purposes is usually taxable at the state level, however it is usually not taxable if the interest is paid by your resident state. For example, Edwina is a resident of Massachusetts. She receives $1,000 in interest from Treasury Securities, $500 in interest from bonds issued by the City of Fall River, Massachusetts, and $750 in interest from bonds issued by the Town of Groton, Connecticut. On her Form 1040, Edwina would have $1,250 of tax-exempt interest on Line 2A and $1,000 in taxable interest reported on Line 2B. On her Massachusetts Form 1, she would only have $750 in taxable interest income from her bonds issued by Groton, Connecticut. All her other interest income would be exempt from state tax. And as usual, there are additional details regarding the taxability of interest. Additional information can be found in the links in the description. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Please share this video with anyone who would find it useful. You can direct any questions, comments, or suggestions to the comment space below. Or you can email me at taxesoversimplified at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at TaxGeekUSA. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.